What's happening everybody, this is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In this video, I'm talking all about the nav bar and more importantly, the nav bar when we hit the responsive design. If I scroll down this page to where the actual nav starts, if I go and inspect it, it'll kick in the mobile design and we get this basic design, which for a lot of projects is fantastic. We click on this nav bar toggler and it goes down and it goes up. But what if we can turn this up to 11? What if we make this animate where these three lines change into an X? Something like this, whereby these new three lines, when I click on them, now change to an X, and when I click on it, they go back to the three lines, taking our design from good to amazing. And we're starting right now. All right, so what I have here is a basic template from Bootstrap. And all I added to this project was I added a custom CSS file. It looks like this. There is nothing up my sleeve. And also what I did is I included the basic nav information that's part of me from Bootstrap. So it looks like this. Hello world, nav bar, and our classic up and down mobile toggler. I also increased this by 150%. So normally it's this small, like a normal nav, but for viewing purposes, we drop this to a much bigger size. So to start this process, what I have to do is I have to change the button style of how I want this to look from those three bars we're gonna recreate and then create the X slash cross afterwards. I'm gonna focus on right now is this word button in this project. To make this really come alive, I'm gonna change and add this class. So we're gonna start with nav bar toggler, but I'm gonna add a couple things. Mainly I'm gonna add flex to this project to make this really shine. Bootstrap comes with flex, so I'm gonna say D, flex, and then because it's mobile first, I want this to work up until the large size because we're using nav bar expand large, so when it doesn't expand, I want flex to work, and when it does expand, I want flex to not work. So how we do this, we have to say D, L, G, none to turn off flex when we go above and beyond the large size. And then I wanna do two more things. I wanna say flex column, because I wanna create a column of information. There's these three bars are right here. And I wanna use justify content around, mainly because I suck at math. And how this works, this is a kind of a unique feature I found, but justify content will justify your content, but the justify content around will evenly disperse it based upon a predetermined distance that you set. And we're gonna do that in our CSS. So it's a little different than evenly because it does work, but I like the justify content around just a little bit better when I set my mobile menu design. You can find this of course, getbootstrap.com slash docs, 5.0 utilities in the flex section. All right, let's move on to the next part, which is down here. And we wanna change this span class navbar, navblar nav bar toggler icons. I want now three bars, not just one bar. So I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna change this nav bar toggler icon and say just toggler icon, and then give it a top bar. And if we duplicate it, we'll then do toggler icon, we'll change this to middle bar. And the last one toggler icon will be the bottom bar, as we're gonna have three bars. What's gonna happen is the top bar will then change to the part of the X or the cross. The middle bar is gonna disappear and the right one will move up and angle down in the opposite direction, creating that cross slash X shape. So now we have our HTML. Let's go into our CSS to make this really work. If we do a quick refresh on this, you can see that now that toggler icon has disappeared and now we changed a little things here and there to move it a little bit differently. So this should look like a pill shape with nothing else inside of it. That's perfect. Instead of our custom CSS, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first work with that nav bar toggler. So I'll say nav bar toggler, and I have to give it a width and height. So, whoa, let's do open and close curly brackets. That could ruin the whole dang thing. Let's say width 20 pixels and a height of 20 pixels. Normally I'm not a fan of heights, but since this is not gonna move, this is one of those rare instances where I do recommend using a height. Let's drop in position relative. If you've watched any of my other videos, you probably know that I rarely use position relative unless I use position absolute afterwards. 
and that's coming down the pipe. After this, we're gonna say transition. We want it to change in a nice smooth motion pattern. I'm gonna say 0.5 seconds, and we'll say ease in, ease out to make it look really smooth and clean. After this, I wanna take out all the existing content that we can inside this button. I'm gonna say nav bar toggler, comma, nav bar, I thought you were gonna catch, nav bar toggler focus, as I don't want the additional pieces to come into play. I'm then gonna say nav, come on, nav bar toggler active, comma, and then one more at nav bar toggler icon, and we'll say focus. I just wanna get rid of any possibility of things getting in the way. So I'm gonna say outline, none. Then I'm gonna say, I'll bring it up just a little bit here. I'll say box shadow, none. And then I'll just say border zero. It just cleans out all additional content that may have been there, which then just makes it easily disappear from the screen. So we have a nice clean, empty space in which to work from. All right, so after this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out two more things to get rid of a couple margins and adding that are in the way. We're gonna say nav bar toggler span, just to clear out a few last margins and padding so now on the road, they don't get in our way when we're working on our project. Again, nothing really changed because they're just minimal margins around the space. Now we have completely clean and clear, no borders, no margins, and no paddings. Awesome. So let's create this toggler icon in terms of the X. We're almost gonna work backwards and then work forwards to the bars second. So what I'm gonna do is, right after the nav bar toggler span, I'm gonna say toggler icon. So I'm gonna bring in that new last name that I created for these three, toggler icon, toggler icon, and toggler icon. After this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say display, we're gonna block it. The position is going to be not inherit, but here comes our favorite one, absolute. And the height is gonna be the size of the bar. We're gonna say 3px. You can always change this later on. What I'm then gonna do is I'll say with 100% to fill the space. Where is that percent key? that's gonna go across the 100% to the width of 20 pixels. So you can always change that number later if you wanna make it longer or shorter. Let's come back up with 100%. The background, I've got a predetermined color I have for my project here, which is D3531A. Save it, we won't see anything yet on the screen if we haven't created this icon. And I'll say border radius to give it a little end. So I'll say one pixel, Let's just do a slight curve on the edge of it. And I'll say opacity is gonna be one. Left, we're gonna default to zero, just to place in the right spot. The transform I wanna do, we have to set this first. It's gonna rotate by default at zero degrees. It's gonna rotate later on once we have it change. And we'll have a quick transition, transition of 0.25 S for seconds, and ease in, ease out, and the semicolon. Again, we just have, it looks like, one line because they're all stacked on top of each other because of position absolute. If I take it out, they just disappear, but the absolute holds it in place, but of course we have one, two, and three on top of each other. So we're gonna have to spread them apart, and that's the power of the flex We've made a flex column and justify content around to help it space it out appropriately. So if we scroll down from toggler icon, what I wanna do next is, I just wanna set the default middle bar. I like to do easy math, so the middle bar almost becomes the literally the middle bar, and I can count up, or in this case, negative numbers for positioning, and positive numbers down for the third. So what I'll do is I have to set the middle bar as like a default setting. So middle bar, I'll say, mar not margin, let's try margin top of zero pixels. It just holds it in the right spot for right now. After that, we wanna then do almost a backwards design. So when this is actually working, what does it do? 
So let's make a note and say when navigation is clicked, what's going to happen to these lines? So it's almost going to build it backwards. What we're going to do is we'll say nav bar toggler and we'll say top bar. There we go. Top, middle, and bottom. Top bar goes first. We're going to say margin top zero pixels and transform. What we'll do is we're going to have it rotate to an angle of 135 degrees. So we'll say rotate and we'll say 135 DEG to make it rotate. That's going to go down in the first part of the cross slash X. After that, we'll do the middle bar. So we'll bring this back up. We have the top bar. Let's do nav bar toggler and we'll say middle bar. From there, we're going to say opacity of zero. Make it disappear and we'll create a filter to help filter it out. So we'll say filter alpha and then we'll say opacity equals zero to help kind of fade a little bit in the transitionary effect. Again, nothing's going to happen quite yet, but if you see it, there's that line right there on the right hand side that goes at an angle, which we're going to see at 135 degrees. So if we come down, we have the top, the middle. Now we have the bottom bar, nav bar toggler, and we'll say bottom bar. And this is going to rotate at an exact opposite direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to say margin top to bring it up to the top. And we'll say zero pixels. And then we're going to say transform and rotate at negative 135. 135 DEG, trying to find that negative key. Now what happens is, whoop, there it goes. Check it out. We have the X looking great. So we have the end first, and then we'll get the beginning done second. So what I'm going to do is come down here and we'll make a note and we'll say state when the nav bar is collapsed. What we also to do is add, let's make a note of that before I mess it up. I'm going to also add the word collapse to this project because I want to actually see now we made the opposite when we click it, but the default state is not the cross. So what I have to do is I have to add the word collapsed into my HTML. So inside this button class, after the nav bar toggles, we like to put the word collapsed. What's going to happen is we're then going to lose eventually this X. We create the word collapsed in our project. So in the custom CSS, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something new, but instead of using the word nav bar toggler top bar, I'm going to say nav bar toggler collapsed dot top bar. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say nav bar toggler dot collapsed, and then we'll say top bar. And in here, we're going to move the margin top to negative 20 pixels. It's going to move up and the rotate will be back to the default of zero degrees. So I'll say transform and rotate zero DEG. That's going to do is move the bar back up to the top and keep it linear. We did the top bar. Let's do the middle bar. Nav bar toggler dot collapsed caught that. Whoa, not all of that. Let's take out the word nav bar toggler twice and just put a period in there. There we go. Let's fix that. And we'll do middle bar. The middle bar will be opacity of one. We want to bring it back and it's going to be set to the default, which we have up to the top of zero pixels margin top zero. It's like this is the zero. We go up negative 20 and down negative 20. So opacity one and filter. We're going to bring it back to existence. So we'll say alpha and we'll say opacity equals 100. Perfect. We have the middle bar. Now if we save it, there it is. We got the top bar, the middle bar. Now let's bring that bottom bar back. So we'll say nav bar toggler dot collapsed and bottom bar. 
bottom bar is going to have a margin. Top, if we went up negative 20 to keep it consistent, I'm going to go negative or positive 20. Almost messed that math up already. And transform, we're going to say rotate 0 DEG. And now check it out. We have our nav bar matching our nav bar here in our design. Pretty cool. We save this right here. And after that, we want to actually add a color because before I don't want to use the same color twice. So I actually brought in a gradient and we can actually do the gradient using a fantastic tool. So there's a great site. Let me move this over called cssgradient.io. I like to use a gradient because it kind of gives an extra kick to this design. And the great part about it is this is a visual way of creating gradients and down below creates a gradient information for us that we can just use in our project. So if we come down our page design, let's actually save this first, make sure it's all working. Save, refresh, click, check this out. It is working fantastically, amazing. And again, if you don't like it that big, you can always change the size of the width and height where if you want to say width 200, heck, we can go full on crazy town and there's our big X. Now that's of course really overwhelming, but I might want to say 40 pixels. If I refresh the page, now it's a little wider. So you can design what you want to work with and the power of flex is this is set to the middle of the nav bar. So you can adjust your design however you want. Let's go back to 20. Make sure it's the same up there, refresh the page. So again, you can choose how you want your nav bar to look like, or if you want them closer together, again, you can change the 20 to 10. So it's your options of choosing different numbers. So we have it working. So let's go actually add that final layer of color for our gradient. At the very bottom, we'll say color, color, that's a good one, color of three lines. Just know what we're doing right here. And we'll say navbar toggler dot collapsed and then toggler icon. Now for this color, I have a different one picked out, which is a little red and blue. So I'll say background and in here I'll say linear gradient. And in the gradient, what I will say is 263 degrees for the angle of the, de of the gradient, <laughs> the angle of the degree. And we'll say RGBA, this one's 252.74 dot, or comma, excuse me, not dot, 7474, and then one. Man, that was a tough typing job all of a sudden. Then we also have to say on top of this RGBA, that's going to be zero degrees or the starting point of the color. After that, what I have to do is RGBA and this one's zero, two, one, two. Oh no, my notes got in the way. What happened on the side of my screen? Perfect. Two, one, two, and then two, five, five, and then one, and this one's going to be 100% as in the other color on the other side. Now that I have this one, let's just put the semicolon in. And now what I get is this kind of blue to red shaped gradient just to give it a bit of pop in my design. And after that, if I click on it, it flips the X around, it hides that middle one and it's working splendidly. If you want more help inside of building the nav bar inside of Bootstrap, I've got a whole video that explains just how to build this actual navigation on this channel. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes.